Man, nice to have you with us uh, this morning here at First Assembly of God. I'm actually recording this at, in the evening. Uh, drove over here in the snow. And uh, it, the picture behind me is a picture of the cove at Cape May. And you can see just snow everywhere. We got about a foot of snow, I think. Maybe more in some areas. Uh, some areas may have um, 20 inches or so, uh, depending on how the drifts are going. Uh, the roads are kind of choppy. They're... they're, they're kind of difficult to, to drive, but um, uh, hope you're well, hope you're safe. This morning, uh, our church is not having in-person services, uh, uh, neither uh, this morning or this evening. 
Uh, we want you to be safe, but hopefully uh, you're joining us this morning and uh, we we're here, excuse me, enjoying the Lord together. Um, just one word, we'd love to um, just remind you that uh, obviously whenever we're not having in-person services, it's a challenge as far as finances and uh, some of you have been really great uh, giving online, so we thank you so much for that. Uh, we would uh, like to just ask you if you could to give online today. Uh, you could uh, go to capemayfirstassembly.org and uh, you can hit the donate button there. You can text to give at 609-400-4075 or you can mail your check to uh, First Assembly of God, P.O. Box 707, Cape May, New Jersey, 08204. And we just appreciate your faithfulness in giving. And uh, we know God will bless you as you are faithful uh, to him. And, uh, you know, we, we just know God is uh, doing great things. We're excited that God is doing great things here at First Assembly and also in your life as well. And so uh, we want to uh, share with you today uh, our uh, series on called Reset. And today I'd like to talk about overcoming fear. And so if you have your Bibles, please go to... Uh, 2 Timothy, uh, the first chapter, and I'm going to be uh, starting at verse 6, going to be reading verses uh, 6 through 9. Uh, so if you have that, you can turn there now, and uh, or you can look on your phone, or I have it here on the screen. Uh, so, um, And uh, we want to talk about overcoming fear today. And uh, the scripture is for 2 Timothy 1. 6 through 9. I hope I said that the first chapter, right? Uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 9, and let me read this to you. Therefore, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not, excuse me, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of, judge, one of power, love, and sound judgment. So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. For, uh, or of me, his prisoner. Instead, share in the suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. He has saved us and has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Um, First thing I want us to talk about today is that if we're going to overcome fear, and we're going to talk about what kind of fear to overcome, uh, to rely on God's spirit. God has uh, given us a spirit to rely on. And, and look at back at verse 6, it says, Therefore I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. This is a scripture that is often uh, misquoted. Uh, for instance, here's one way it's been misquoted lately, and it's always been misquoted, but here's one way lately that it's been misquoted. A uh, person will say, well, I'm going to go get vaccinated for COVID, and someone will respond, well, you don't need to get vaccinated because God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, and you don't need to be afraid. Or, um, you know, a person might wear a mask in a store. Oh, don't wear a mask. I'm not going to give in to fear. Uh, that's so much what this scripture is just not talking about at all. What this scripture is talking about is not to be afraid of doing the ministry that God has given us. And and so um, I'm not going to tell you what to do as far as masks and vaccines. That's, a, that's between you and your doctor, but it's certainly not between you and your Facebook friend or anyone else or me. Uh, but this scripture isn't talking about that. This scripture is talking about uh, having fear of doing the ministry. Um, he says, uh, uh, Paul talks about uh, Timothy having a gift that was there or recognized in Timothy through the laying on of hands. And, and that was a commission into ministry. Let me tell you what's going on in this, um, in this book. This is probably the last book that Paul ever wrote. Uh, he is at the end of his life. Tradition tells us that, um, uh, that, uh, um, he was going to die very soon. Tradition tells us his head was severed from his body. And, and so uh, he's about to face that. And he knows he's about to face it. All of uh, 
all the avenues and everything that he tried to work through is gone now. He knows he's about to face death. And what he's doing is he's passing on the gospel to the next generation. And that's what Timothy represents, the next generation. Timothy was the pastor of the Ephesian church. The Ephesian church started with, started with persecution. Paul and Silas went there, and, and they were so effective in preaching the gospel that uh, there, were, there was this big temple there, the temple uh, Diana. Diana, that's one of her names. Uh, this was a goddess of uh, fertility, and she had about 10 breasts. Uh, if you see pictures of her, you look it up. It's just wild, right? And there was this big temple there, and uh, it was the biggest thing in the city. And people came from all over the then-known world to see this beautiful temple and to worship the goddess Diana in that temple. Paul and Silas were so effective in their ministry there that the guys that sold little trinkets, little idols that people could take home and pray to, they were losing business. Can you imagine if Jesus was so effective in your town that like uh, things that were against the gospel were starting to lose business? That's what was going on. And so uh, they took Paul out of the city and beat him and left him for dead. So when Paul's talking about don't be afraid, he's not talking about, uh, you know, medicine or putting a mask on or, or anything, any of these stupid things that we're talking about uh, that, that we kind of go nuts over, or the, the dumb political things we're all fighting about all the time. That's not what he was talking about. He was talking about doing the ministry of Jesus Christ. Do you know Paul was left for dead outside the city of Ephesus when he started this church? And we don't know what happened. It may have been a miraculous miracle where God healed him. But it says he was beaten and left for dead. And then he got up. And you know what he did? He walked back into the city to preach the gospel some more. Uh, that's kind of the man Paul was. Uh, but, but where did he get that? He got that from the Spirit of God. He said, we have been given this Spirit. That, that this Spirit doesn't tra transfer power. I mean, it doesn't transfer um, uh, 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 fear to us. But it transforms, transfers power. What would, be, what would be the things Timothy would have been uh, timid about? Well, let's look at what he, where he is. He's in a city that wants to persecute Christians. Paul, the apostle, the great apostle Paul, is about to die. Timothy is like his son. Uh, we know uh, Timothy came to the faith through his mother and through his grandmother. There is no mention of scripture of, of his father. We don't know if his father died or his father left. We don't know. We see this, though. We see that Paul was like a father to Timothy. And Paul's saying to him, Paul's not just saying, hey, don't be afraid. Everything's going to be okay. Paul's saying to, to him, you and I both know I'm about to die. It's going to be over for me. Now, I don't want you to have a spirit of fear. You, you know, one of the things Timothy could have been afraid over is that, will people take me seriously now? Uh, and Paul says, you received the gift by the laying on of my hands. In other words, you were commissioned into the ministry by me. Uh, that is your credentials. Don't let anyone tell you you're not really, you know, you're not the Apostle Paul. Or you don't, who do you think you are? No, uh, I recognize that God had gifted you for ministry. And so I laid hands on you and I commissioned you into ministry. So now that I'm going away, don't be afraid. So, so. He, um, he may have been afraid that people wouldn't take him seriously. He may have been afraid that he would be persecuted himself. He may have been afraid that, um, that he wouldn't know what to do now, that he wouldn't have the authority to speak on things uh, be, because uh, the Apostle Paul was no longer with him. And he said, look, you haven't been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. And I'm not just talking... And, he, and here, he's not just talking about miracles, which is awesome, uh, but he's talking about the power of God in your life. You're, when he's ministering, when he's preaching, when he's uh, talking about the things of Christ, the spirit of power is going to come through him. Uh, and uh, he's not going to have to yell and scream and jump up and down like a lot of guys do, uh, but he's going to speak forth with power and anointing. This is what Paul is saying. He says, not only have you gotten a spirit of power, of course, Paul does these long run-on sentences, so he lists everything out. Uh, but he says the power and of love, right? What's going to perfect love cast out all fear? Um, if um, those that are like online yelling at people, 
saying, you know, oh, you know, if you decide to get vaccinated, it's just this is the best, um, you know, example I could just think of right now. Right. But if they're saying you decide to get vaccinated, you're giving into a spirit of fear. Well, perfect love cast out all fear. And that's not a statement that comes from perfect love. Right. In fact, that's a statement of fear. You know, uh, making you afraid of making a decision, uh, but perfect love cast out all fear. And so if you want to overcome fear in your life, uh, be a person that loves other people. Uh, you cannot feel love for someone and afraid of them at, at the same time. Uh, you, you, um, when you have God's love for someone, that love just cast out all fear of them because you see them the way God sees them. Um, and of sound judgment. Right. Uh, fear makes us do crazy things. Fear. Fear is one of the things that makes us go online and yell crazy stuff and and get mad at people. And 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 always fear controls us. And and we look in a society right now. We're in a society that is uh, is very much controlled by fear. And people that have the loudest voices try to control you by fear. Uh, if if um, if if this doesn't happen, then everything's going to fall apart. If this person isn't uh, isn't elected, that happened in, in November, right? Uh, the, the the whole country's going to fall apart if this person gets elected, and 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 it's just this fear that everyone's throwing out all the time. No, we have sound judgment. We don't have a spirit of fear, which means when when someone's coming at us with something like that, we can say, you know what, it's okay. I don't have to be afraid. See, in Timothy's case, all the people around him, uh, all the people, the people in his church were facing persecution, and the persecutors were the ones that were uh, going around in fear, saying, we got to get rid of these Christians because they're going to destroy us. Um, and yet, Paul says, look, what kind of spirit did, did you receive? We received the spirit of power, love, and sound judgment. That means we're not flying off the handle. We're not going crazy. We we are ministering. We are we are walking in God. And I think um, the biggest thing that Timothy, Timothy faced, the biggest fear that Timothy faced, that we also face, is actually just sharing the gospel. It seems like we'll do anything but share the gospel with someone. Uh, we we'll all get involved in politics. We'll get involved in arguing. We'll get involved in um, uh, you know, uh, all, all the talk about, you know, COVID and everything, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get all involved in attacking people. Uh, these are all fear things. Uh, but the one thing we won't do is actually just share the gospel. Every person should have a elevator conversation ready, a two minute elevator conversation where you simply just share what Jesus has done in your life. You know, I, you know, I grew up in a uh, uh, nominally Christian home and that we went to Catholic church once in a while. A friend of mine invited me to church and there was something different going on there. And it just seemed like the people were different. And, and they told me about the message of how Jesus Christ could forgive my sins. I, I, I asked Christ into my life and my life changed. I really experienced a supernatural change in my life that I couldn't explain, but it changed my life. And that I know that Jesus is real and he wants to change your life too. See, that's an example of a two-minute elevator conversation that we should just have ready to go. Those of us who know Christ should just be ready to share what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. Um, and so the first thing is we need to rely on the Spirit and just think about the Spirit that we have been given, the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit doesn't fly off the handle. The Holy Spirit doesn't, uh, doesn't, the message of the Holy Spirit isn't that the sky is falling and everything's going to fall apart. The message of the Holy Spirit is power, love, and sound judgment. That sounds like Jesus to me. Jesus was a man of power, love, and sound judgment. And that's the same spirit we have in us. That's what the Holy Spirit is working in us. You know, a person with the Holy Spirit isn't panicking. Uh, the person relying on this Holy Spirit isn't panicking. They're not yelling. They're not ye they're, they're not fighting with everybody. Uh, they, they, they're, not, they're not defining other people as their enemies and going after them. That's not what the Holy Spirit is. He, he is the spirit of power, love, 
and sound judgment. Um, secondly, um, as, we, as we look at this, ah, come on. Um, you need to share in suffering. Now, that sounds weird, um, but to overcome fear by sharing in suffering. Let me read you the scripture here. So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Instead, share in the suffering of the gospel, relying on the power of God. This is powerful. Um, and, and let me go back there. Um, so he says, look, here's Paul in prison. And a lot of people had just basically deserted him. And he says this in the book, uh, that, that these people just deserted him because they're afraid. And of course they are. They don't want to be killed like Paul's about to be killed. And Paul says, look, this is a test for you, Timothy. Don't be ashamed of me. Uh, don't, don't say, well, how, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that guy, you know, uh, and, and don't, don't do that. And don't be ashamed of the testimony about the Lord. What did I just say a few moments ago? What we're afraid of is sharing the gospel, right? We'll do anything but share the gospel. And why? Because we don't want to suffer. Now for us, we, su we don't suffer major persecution, but we, we may suffer embarrassment. We may suffer the loss of friends. We may suffer uh, just the, uh, the, the, the awkwardness of a conversation. And, uh, and Paul is saying, hey, if you want to overcome fear, don't run from that suffering, but embrace it, no matter what that suffering is. And remember, we're, we're talking about a man that was beaten and left for dead and walked back into Ephesus to preach the gospel some more. But how could he do that? Through the power of the Spirit of God. Because he, he says, um, share in the suffering of the gospel. How do you share in the suffering of the gospel? You rely on God's power. So for us, it might be sharing the gospel and then being, a, you know, we might get made fun of, we might get rejected. And how do we deal with that? We rely on the power of God. Do you see what the power of God is here? The power of God isn't miracles, and, 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 and I believe in all that. I do. I believe in healings, miracles, and, 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 I, and I, I so appreciate God's power and his anointing when he does those things. But here the power of God is putting up with uh, the embarrassment, putting up with the possibility of suffering and saying, hey, you may have to face some suffering, but uh, you overcome that fear by facing it, not by running from it. You're going to face it. And how are you going to face it? With God's power. God's power is going to give you the ability to face the suffering. Uh, there was a, a famous martyr named Polycarp. He was in his 80s when uh, they brought him to the stake to burn him alive. And, and he was such a wise and sweet man. Uh, he was gentle. Uh, he was a, he was, uh, he was a, uh, one of the... Um, believed to be one of the actual disciples of the Apostle John, and, and just full of wisdom, and so many people respected him, even to the point that the uh, Roman soldiers bringing him to uh, his stake to be burned just begged him. They just said, um, listen, just, just say that you deny Christ. Just say that you uh, honor the emperor and you you call him Lord. Just do that, and, 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 and we'll let you go, and you can... You can pastor your church. We don't want to hurt you. They, they begged him. And he said, 80 years I've served with him, and he has done me no wrong. How can I deny him now? And uh, there are stories of supernatural things just happening uh, and, and him not experiencing the pain of the fire. Uh, but I believe angels coming or, or something. It's just this, these crazy stories of, uh, of Polycarp and how he died and, and people seeing his face glowing. And, and, and God, the point is, God was there with him in the suffering. Now, I can't promise you that you won't feel the pain of suffering. But I can say this, that when we suffer, God is there with us. And we get through the suffering by relying on him and trusting uh, the third thing I just want to share with you today on this snowy Sunday is rely on grace. And verse 9 says this, He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, 
which has given uh, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Uh, this is so powerful. Let me just break this down. This is so. First of all, he says he saved us and called us with a holy calling. Um, God, holy means to be separate. God has called us out. God has called us to be separate. God has called us to be different. And I believe every person in Christ has been called to a holy calling. Uh, they, they've, all, they've first of all been called to Christ, to know him, to experience him. That's what Jesus wants for you. Not just to be like a good person, but he wants you to experience his presence and his life in you. And uh, he's called us to a holy calling. But this is so great, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. You know, uh, I, as much as I hate to say it, Jesus didn't look across the world and find me and say, you know, there's something special about Leo. There's something so special about him. I'm going to call him into ministry because, man, uh, the things that he has done, uh, I'm just so impressed. No. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Uh, God said, you know, probably said, I don't know what he said, but he probably said, Leo's such a screw up. I'm going to use him for my glory. Um, in other words, we were called by the grace of God. Um, and so um, we don't have to have a spirit of fear. They see, one of the things we might be afraid of is, who are you to talk to me? Someone can say that to us. Who are you to talk to me? Who are you? You know, you, you think you're better than me? People say this all the time. Uh, you may even mention Jesus to them to say, oh, you're judging me. You think you're better than me. Um, and, and, and we don't have to be afraid of that because the reality is, no, we were called by God's grace. And God's grace and God's purpose cannot be revoked. And he's not going to revoke the ministry that he's given you and the ministry that he's given me. Many of us are afraid to do ministry, but God has called us all to be in ministry and to be a blessing to other people. Um, and so in our church, there are so many ways to, to, to be in ministry, and we're trying to find places for every single person to find a ministry, or either a place they can help in the church, or a place they can help outside, or, or a ministry, or, or a work of evangelism to do. Um, we know God has a purpose for your life, and he has grace on you and on me which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Man, that's powerful. God looked all across time and through Christ chose us to be in ministry with him. See, the biggest thing Timothy was afraid of was ministry. Um, and, and so that's why it, it's so crazy that people just misinterpret this scripture all the time and talk about like life things, right? Well, if you if you're if you're afraid of uh, getting sick, then uh, you're you're taking on a spirit of fear. That that's not even what this is talking about here. What this is talking about is moving in ministry when you know there's going to be things coming against you, but moving in ministry, being compelled by Christ to do the work that Christ has called you to do, and we received it not by being really cool, not by being really talented, but by the grace and mercy of God. I some rumbling. Sorry about that. So um, today, as you're home uh, and uh, hopefully safe, um, hopefully your heat's working and it's nice and cozy there and you're, you're watching this with your fuzzy bunny zippers on and your, your hot cocoa or your coffee, I want, to remind, I want to remind you that God has called you with a holy calling. God has poured his grace on you. Christ has chosen you. And through him, you can share the testimony of Jesus Christ and what he has done in your life. Because God is good. Well, let me pray for you. Father, everyone in the sound of my voice right now, I pray for a supernatural work of your Holy Spirit in their lives. That we would not get in, give in to a spirit of fear but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. And Lord, we would not shrink back from proclaiming the gospel. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you today. Uh, I hope I didn't offend you. Uh, 
but if it was the word of God that offended you, I would, I would encourage you to pray about that. <laughs> but uh, in any case, we look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, Wednesday night we'll be here live, and uh, we, you don't want to miss that. And then we'll be together in person, uh, uh, trusting God next week, trusting we don't get any more snow. And uh, we look forward to it. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.